lot of students like to prefer. So in doing the box method, it's going to be exactly kind of the same, similar thing. All right? You're really going to be doing exactly the same thing as far as finding your factors. So we're going to do um, A times C, which would be 4, and then my B is going to be 5. All right? You multiply your coefficient and your uh, constant, you get the top number, and then you take your B and down there. And what we want to do is we want to determine what two numbers multiply to give us 4, but add to give us 5. So we look at the factors of 4, which would be 4, 2, and 1. Four and and one. we notice that, yeah, positive 4 and 1. We're going to do that. So in factoring, uh, what we looked at is we think of multiplication, right? Factoring is writing a product as multiplication. So the way we like to think about this sometimes is if you look at a, a rectangle, and this is what I kind of explained to you guys last class period, if I give you the area of 16, can you write 16 as a product of, or as a product of two numbers? Well, yeah, of course. You could say, well, if the area is 16, you could say that both side lengths are equal to 4, right? Because 4 times 4 gives you 16. And that's exactly what factoring is doing. You're taking a number or an area and writing it as a product of two terms, or sometimes even uh, multiple. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our rectangle and we're going to say, all right, so what is the area then? Well, the area is 2x squared plus 5x plus 2. Well, it's going to get a little difficult, though, to put in three different boxes into my rectangle. So what I could do is I could say, I'll put my 2x squared here, and I'll put my 2 here. But then, like I did in the grouping one, remember when I wrote those middle terms as two different terms? Instead of writing 5x in both these boxes, I can use 4x and 1x. Because what's 4x plus 1x? 5x. So it's just like that grouping, what we did, um, but it's just a way to represent it. Yes? Is that where you put the x and where you put the 4x? Nope. Nope. Either way it work. All right, so now what we do is we just want to figure out what two numbers multiply to give us 2x squared. All right, so you could say 2x and x, right? Because 2x times x equals x. But here's where it gets a little confusing because you guys have to remember, you always want to have your positive, you always want to use integers. So 2x times 1 is going to give you x. Well, that's, you're going to have to use fractions for that, right? Because 2x does not evenly divide into x. So what you're going to want to do is be careful of this. Make sure that each side length divides into each of your boxes. So therefore, you're going to want to write this as x and 2x. Because the 2x divided into both of these? Yes. Does x divide into both of those? Yes. So 2x times x is 2x squared. x times what gives you x plus 1. 2x times what gives you 4x plus 2. So therefore, you have x plus 2 times 2x plus 1. <coughs> Final answer. You can one the plus 2 on the side. OK, so x goes into 2x squared 2x times, right? Because x times 2x equals 2x squared. x times what gives you x? 1, right? x times 1 gives you x. I'm trying to find the area of each one. Well, I'm giving you the area. I'm trying to find the side lengths for each area. So therefore, this area is 4x. Four, four well, if I know one length is 2x, what does the other length have to be? 2, because 2x two times 2 gives you 4x, right? And then 2 times 1 gives you 2. Does that make sense? OK. Um, and so there you go. There's your answer. Hey, can you? I guess you want to Nope. Huh?